Hello, Melody, and thank you for joining us. Uh, this is Zachary. Can you hey, say Zachary. hi? Zachary. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm Melody, and this is Natalie, and she's nine. And uh, we both have mitochondrial disease, um, as well as our son, Stephen, who's almost 14. And, um, but Natalie is the most affected one in our house. Okay. And the most positive one in our house, too. So, we well, like to keep her around. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, what is mitochondrial disease? Mitochondrial disease is a defect in the way your your body produces energy. And since they've been doing research about mitochondrial disease, they found that um, each cell can have up to hundreds of mitochondria, and each mitochondria has five complexes. So it's kind of like a roadmap of how your how it produces energy, the three types of energy our body uses. When you have this disease, it means that there's something in that those complexes that don't work properly. Okay. So your body does not produce energy properly. Okay, and then how does that affect you? It affects everybody differently. Okay. And so it's very hard to diagnose and it's um, often mistaken for many other things. The rule of thumb is somebody has three or more body systems that are affected. The five main areas are um, GI function, brain function, breathing, heart, and muscle skeletal. Right now there's the gold standard in diagnosing is to have a muscle biopsy. Unfortunately, that's a fairly invasive procedure. And Natalie, how does it affect you? <laughs> how does it affect you? She, she has a feeding tube. Okay. And she gets some formula and hydration because the main key to mitochondrial disease is hydration. So she was having to go and talk for IVs often. She was also silently aspirating, which even was went undetected for over five years. You see her; she looks normal, she acts normal. It's one of the it's one of the hidden things about mitochondrial disease is you can't necessarily see it on the outside. Some people are affected differently, and you can very much see it on the outside, but not all. So Natalie has a feeding tube, and she uses it mostly for hydration. So she wears her milk for 12 hours a day. This is her feeding pack, so she carries it around. We try to find different designer bags. That way, she doesn't have the same boring thing all the time. And she um, wears it every day, wears it to school. She can take care of most of everything with her tube all by herself. She doesn't like anybody else to touch it. Uh, we give all of her men. Yeah, she doesn't want anybody else to touch it either. <laughs> so as a baby, she had um, very severe seizures as well. So now she has some encephalomyopathy. Encephalopathy, there we go. Which is just slowing up her brain, and it kind of depends on her overall fatigue for the day. And that varies day to day, so it's kind of hard to keep up with it sometimes. What are the treatments for it? The treatment is basically to deal with each individual symptom as they come up. Okay. Kind of some management. Is it common in adults? Because I've heard mostly children, but with you having okay. it, is it common in adults? It is. It is. And it used to be um, a childhood disease. And I wasn't diagnosed until Natalie was diagnosed. My GI system is very sensitive, and I think fatigue are my main things. Sometimes I just feel like I'm going to collapse. I have nowhere, um, seizure disorders and such, so. Okay. And tell me about the Mitochondrial Disease Awareness Week. This week is Mitochondrial Disease Awareness Week, and our challenge is to educate other people about mitochondrial disease. We're wearing, both wearing our Mito Awareness shirts today. Though you guys can't see them, it says, um, dress for Mito Awareness. So many symptoms, it's spooky. <laughs> So you can have dementia, kidney failure, um, ptosis, migraines, short stature, hearing failure is common, diabetes, hypoglycemia, muscle pain, um, liver failure, it goes on and on. So it can really encompass lots of different areas. Now we have some balloons too, but tell us about the, uh, the symbolic nature of the balloons. Some people think that it's a way of talking to our friends or remembering our friends that we've lost. Um, and it's a great way to remember them and send messages to them up in heaven. Ready? Yeah. Let go! Let go! Let go! Where are you going? Yeah! Good job, right? 
And then when, you know, if you try to do it at a park or someplace, then you you might run into other people and they'll wonder why you're doing it, and then that's one more person you can tell about this. Is there anything else, any other information you'd like to impart to people out there in this Awareness Week? I guess maybe just don't judge a book by its cover. It's just that what you see on the outside isn't always what's going on on the inside. Well, thank you thank very you much. Thank you so much for your time. And Zachary, thank you so much for listening so intently. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Good job. Bye. Good job. Bye.